thank you chairman for the introduction okay i am manogran i will present uh, our work of zeptogram level mass sensing of lightweight mass, uh, gas molecules using genome resonator so this is the outline of my presentation first i will be discussing the introduction to our work then i will move on to the graphene resonator fabrication process briefly and then i will discuss rf measurement setup then i will discuss the results and then conclude our work okay uh, as many of you know the voc uh, volatile organic components emitted by uh, from the new house new car are um, are really big problem in the developed country because uh, in the winter time they cannot uh, open their window like in india it's different conditions but in uh, cold countries it is different so that's uh, yeah, usually that leads to the circulation of the uh, some this small level molecules voc molecules that uh, affects their health so especially for example uh, formaldehyde of very low percentage around, uh, around 0.8 parts per billion or benzene of 5.7 parts per billion or tetrachloroethylene of uh, 3.4 billion uh, parts per billion if we expose to uh, the humans are exposed to this low concentration level for 8 hours 8 hours that is important then it 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 has the health effect that's one of the main issues with this low even though low concentration that leads to problems so this is a brief chart of like voc emission from uh, new england uh, from us so uh, around th 392 uh, thousands of tons voc gases are emitted in uh, 2011 itself so we need to sense uh, very low level uh, concentration of the gas this gas molecules okay so one of the uh, method to sense this kind of things is like uh, resonators uh, mass de detection method and um, because it is high resolution and accuracy to, to very small change in the mass so if we compare uh, the existing already developed one is uh, silicon uh, resonators and of course recently uh, carbon inner tube and graphene uh, resonators also being developed the advantage of graphene compared to the silicon is uh, of course its thickness can be reduced to mono layer that's the main thing so it le uh, it leads to the increase in the mass sensitivity because of uh, it weight decreases then uh, it can uh, increase at least 50 more than 50 times the uh, sensitive compared to the silicons for the comparable dim dimensions. So, uh, graphene is uh, one of the material uh, for the mass sense uh, resonator one, and the carbon nanotube is it's difficult to control the locations. But graphene, CVD graphene, it doesn't have that problem. Okay, so another important thing of uh, graphene is it has high mobility as well as high mechanical strength of. Uh, 1 terapascal that is young molars of 1 terapascals and it, it can withstand up to 20 percent tensile strain and it has high surface uh, to volume ratio so these are the main advantage for the uh, graphene names and of course they are uh, we are okay also working on the switches and uh, of cantilever and uh, doubly clamped beams so they are very stable no problem at all so so uh, and especially in uh, we are concentrating on lightweight molecules for that we have chosen uh, hydrogen and argon uh, gas mixtures okay so this is the brief uh, uh, view of the fabrication process like we take the cvd graphene and then of course using the bilayer resist coating and eb systems and uh, o2 flux matchings we first make the contact then uh, and the resonators, then we will uh, make another rebuilding step to make the metal contact by like by layer resist and it's typical process. Then uh, we uh, make a <coughs> sacrificial layer with HSQ resist. It is a uh, it uh, HSQ resist will be converted into SiO2 after exposed to the electron beam. So uh, that is that was used as a uh, sacrificial layer. So, so then after that we had the top gate fabrication like this using typical EV lithography process. And um, at last we removed the, um, the sacrificial layers and bottom uh, SiO2 layers uh, using big H of etching and then uh, stabilized using the su uh, supercritical band layer to avoid the capillary effect of the graphene beams. Okay, so now I move on to the uh, uh, measurement setups. So we uh, use the uh, coplanar waveguides, as uh, you know, well, uh, to have the better responsivity at high frequency. We need um, better uh, 
signal to uh, ground condition up to the device levels. So for that purpose, we fabricated coponal wave guides. So uh, in this one, this is the top gate one, and this is train uh, terminal, and this is source terminal, and we use uh, the co uh, coplanar wave guides. Uh, probes like this this one ground signal ground signal uh, like this connected here that like uh, in the uh, our vacuum prober and we used a network analyzer with uh, bias t so whenever we wanted to do bias uh, biasing dc biasing we used the bias t then uh, uh, of course uh, it is connected to the uh, through the coaxial cable to the in, uh, in inside the prober and again similarly we take out and bias t and uh, we have the amplifiers to uh, before uh, being given to the network analyzers. And the, uh, of course, in, our, in this measurement system, we didn't use the DC uh, biasing at all. Okay, now I move on to the uh, results. So uh, th this is the uh, okay, optical microscope image of the CVD graphene with the resonators like this. And uh, we have, of course, characterized the, uh, using the Raman's uh, measurements. The, it's almost mono layers. Uh, then, uh, the, uh, for this resonator, in, the, in this uh, work, uh, le length of the resonator was one micrometer and width were uh, 500 nanometer, and we calculated the resonant frequency, which is around 93 megahertz. Then, uh, if we compare this result with the, our measurement results, that is, uh, we measured uh, transmission characteristics, like. As I told here, we uh, we have sent the RF signal towards the gate, and we measure the uh, response at the train terminal like this. Okay, we measure the, the resonant frequency to be around 95 megahertz and quality factor of uh, 45. Um, and of course, this is at the vacuum conditions of 1.1 into 10 to the power of 4 pascals. And before going on to the, our uh, gas sensing measurement, we wanted to understand how the, uh, these gas molecules uh, are adsorbed onto graphene. Because if it is not adsorbed onto the graphene, if it is not binding in the graphene, then it's difficult to sense. So we did the uh, DFT calculations. Like in this case, we have taken the uh, graphene like this, and we put the slight uh, hydrogen molecules slightly apart to see what happens and optimize the structure. Then, if you see here, then mo molecules are, uh, okay, so they are moved closer to this one and they are uh, optimized, okay, at last it went separate. So this is the final optimized structures, that is hydrogen molecules sits inside a ring like this. Uh, so um, they and they are almost okay. Uh, uh, PC subs to the, uh, it seems to be PC subs to the graphene. And in the case of um, argon also, We did, okay, we put the, uh, closer to the uh, graphene and we optimized the structures. Then if you saw, uh, see that one, they move together and uh, they make a uh, one was bonding to the substrate uh, uh, graphene like this. It is absorbed on like this portions. So it is like this. And of course, we uh, used, the, uh, we optimized the structure to be less than 0 0.01 electron volt per Armstrong uh, for, uh, force in this one. So, uh, to get a little bit clear idea, we plotted the electron dif uh, density uh, difference plot like this so along the uh, molecule and graphene structure like this. So when we see in this structure, there is a uh, charge uh, continuity from the graphene to the H2 molecule in this case. So that means that there is a charge transfer between happening between hydrogen and uh, graphene. And the binding energy was calculated to be uh, 141 milli electron volt. But in the case of uh, graphene, uh, there is no clear continuity bet uh, of charge between the graphene to uh, argon. So that means that there is uh, the bonding is happening through the only one of binding natures. So it, its binding energy was calculated to be 287 uh, milli electron volt like this. So uh, these things, this uh, binding energy and these things uh, depicts that physicization uh, in nature is happening to the, uh, to these molecules and graphene that is hydrogen and argon. So, okay, now uh, with this knowledge that okay, hydrogen and argon will be absorbed onto the graphene, we move on to the, our measurement results, and we uh, we put the molecules onto the uh, resonators, and of course we detected the 
uh, resonant frequency shift like this. So uh, we varied the pressures like this uh, from 5.6 uh, into 10 to the power minus 3 pascal to the 8.1 into 10 to the power minus 3 pascals. And uh, we clearly saw that there is a uh, decrease in the uh, resonant frequency peak uh, like this. And uh, of course, this was done uh, with uh, hydrogen and argon for one east uh, line ratio at room temperatures. And uh, this is okay, ap approximate our rough calculation of how converting this uh, gas molecule concentration into the uh, PPP levels. Of course, it's just for uh, only understanding purpose. Okay, but um, so uh, but it it shows that like it's uh, parts per billion levels it's just uh, just for comparison purpose. So. Uh, then uh, this downward shift of uh, of the resonant frequency clearly indicates that molecules absorb onto the graphene resonators and mass is, mass of the uh, beam resonator increases and it leads to the uh, sorry it leads to the decrease um, uh, in the resonant frequency like this okay so initially it is less then over the time it it's getting absorbed and in between each uh, point uh, we actually we we made this pressure and then waited for more than 15 minutes for every time to stabilize. Like we wanted to make sure that uh, the molecules are uh, absorbed and the measurement conditions are in stabilized nature. And Q factor also clearly uh, decreases. So this decrease in the Q factor is, is uh, well known to this one because, uh, okay, of course, the Q factor is depends on anchoring and uh, then external damping and internal damping. And the anchoring, we assume that it is not affected by our measurements. But uh, the, due to the absorption of the uh, hydrogen and argon molecules, then uh, uh, air damping is increasing. So the air damping definitely will uh, reduce the Q factors. But internal also, uh, that is, uh, when the molecules absorb on to the graphene, it internal stiffness also changes. So that may also degrade. So due to this one, the Q factor clearly degrades like this. And um, from this one, for uh, these two points, when we calculated the mass and direct and mass change at these two points, it is 886 jeptogram like this. So, uh, okay, so from this, we uh, clearly uh, understand that we can use the graphene resonators for the uh, lightweight ga gas molecules as well as. Okay, so, uh, now I conclude our work. So we uh, we got the <coughs> resonance frequency of 95 megahertz, and which is consistent with the uh, theoretical calculation as well as. And from first principle calculations, we found out that uh, there is a, a effective charge transfer between graphene and hydrogen. But in the case of argon and graphene, it's only Van der Waals binding in nature. And Q factor damp uh, degradation with the increase in the uh, pressure is attributed to the material damping caused by the surface molecule absorption and the air damping due to the resonator uh, gas interactions. And we uh, have achieved around 886 level mass sensing in this uh, result. And we can use this from this, we can conclude that we uh, rather than uh, measuring the heavy molecules like xenon and uh, naphthalene using resonators, we can go for the lightweight mass molecules for using the graphene resonators. That's we can conclude. Thank you very much for the question.